Cruz. That's how they get a call from Andy Cruz. Yeah, that's right, everybody. It's the Mole Patrol. We are back for yet another round of the Mole Patrol podcast here on RHAP, baby. That's right. The Mole continues. Sorry, no new episodes on Netflix, but hey, new episodes of podcasts. That's always exciting. Hello, I'm Josh Wiggler. I am joined by the whole patrol. First <laughs> up, of course. No, the, no, the Mole was that, did I do it wrong? Did I do it wrong? The whole patrol? <laughs> that the S-hole patrol? Uh-huh. Well, sh- shit. I ruined it live on the podcast. It's the whole mole patrol. Joined here by Brooklyn Zed. Hi, Brooklyn Zed. Hello, I am here. Yeah. You I'm are, excited. Indeed. Yes, I'm excited very excited. Jessica Lees. Jess, how's it going? It's going great, Josh. Ready to set some goals with the whole patrol. With the whole patrol. Uh, Rob Sesternino, part of the whole patrol. So excited. <laughs> part uh, of the whole yeah, to be back. It's been a goal. Yes, indeed. Lee Dole. Uh, gosh, I can't keep trying to do it. I wish our next guest was named Joel, but instead we are joined here by someone who is tremendous to have making his Mole Patrol debut. Not a member of the Mole cast uh, this time out, but we are so excited to have uh, a friend of RHAP, a reality TV contestant in his own right. One of my favorites and yours, if you are a Survivor fan, was watching the mole from behind the scenes, had many a thought with which to share to us. We are bringing him in. It is your friend and mine, the great Christian Hubicki. Christian, welcome to being a part of the whole mole patrol. Well, it's thank you so much. It's uh, great to be an honorary whole mole, whole mole patrol member. Yes. I, I believe is the official title I was told over email. So Thank thank you. No, I I had so many opinions and uh, the people in my life who don't watch the mole were were tired of hearing them. So I appreciate you letting me vent them out amongst this esteemed group group of of fellow uh, real diehard mole fans. Yes, uh, we are very excited to have you here, Christian. Uh, I'm I'm thrilled to get your takes on the season. We're going to get into all of that here for a bonus edition of the Mole Patrol. Not the last bonus edition of the Mole Patrol, Rob. I believe that there's uh, there's other items on the buffet line here. Look at this. Yeah, it's a double header uh, tonight. Uh, here we are live, and uh, we're going to talk with uh, Dr. Christian Hubicki, who said, "Hey, uh, I've got so much mole takes." Uh, we said, "Please." can we hear them uh so we're here to do that and then at 9 p.m eastern we're gonna be joined by another one of the contestants greg who Whoa. uh is very excited to talk about his experience on the mole so if you're watching us live don't go anywhere but we're gonna break it up into two different podcasts okay so two different podcasts two different streams one uh training in mole monday for soul sunday zed it's a sunday night and we are lit that's right. I literally forgot it was Sunday because I yeah. know I'm doing this again tomorrow. What T- what what is time, time? Days, times. What is even time, Jessica Lees? It's a flat circle. Indeed. All right. And so is the hole in which we are huddled down to talk about the mole here with Christian. So Christian, you are not somebody who watched the mole back in the day, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, I, I don't know where who, who's giving you the, if the mole's giving you your facts, uh, Josh. I am an OG. Oh, it was in your sabotage. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, so yeah, you, you have been. You, have been you, yeah. you didn't. You, you didn't sacrifice the pot for the dossier. I was wa- day one. I'm starting to get watcher. sus of Sam Moore now, who uh, passed yeah. that <laughs> dossier to me. I think mm-hmm. Sam might be uh, Sam Mole. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yes. Uh, it, indeed, he might like you know put him down on the quiz. I was watching the original mole back in two thousand and one. Uh, I believe it's when it started airing because uh, this because it was ABC's Answer to Survivor, as we all know, with Anderson Cooper. I was really into it. I was watching, and I was ready for season two. Season two famously happens and is canceled after three episodes, and I just like after I'm like ugh, I'm heartbroken, ripped yeah. away from me. OK. And then, of course, later on, we find out that it was that that uh, that it was rekindled for a bit. We all know the history of the mole. And I, so I watched it then, but it was still canceled, ripped away. OK, so I had to like live the real my life boat. like the real love. But I was I was I was I had to live my life without the mole. I tried to cope in various ways I can. I, I watched the celebrity mole when that came in 2008 season five when that came out. Uh, but then it was ripped away again. Never really took off. So. Um, and I, I, and in that time off, I did the best I could. I 
the, the Cope, I bought the soundtrack of the, the mole uh, on, on CD. Incredible. Of, it cost me $50. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah, out of, I probably got the one copy off of whatever weird music website they were selling it. And I ripped it. It's like an it appropriate, and- uh, like totally ridiculous uh, thing to do with money as per the mole, I feel like. Yeah. Uh, draining think, $50 so. into yeah. the mole soundtrack is yeah. a very mole move. And Josh yeah. could have performed it for you for free. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like being transported to my childhood. You know, like the little chimes? I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> The English you know horn, the muted trumpet. We'll get to the soundtrack. That's one of my opinions on the mole. And in, the, in that time off, uh, I was into internet forums and internet forum mafia for people who used to play that back in the day. And I made my own. The oh, I think you were in the internet forum mafia. I was like, wow. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. That's a, you know, that, I, I had trouble past. What can I say? Uh, uh-huh. But, I, but you know, like there's the game of mafia. Some people just played on internet forums and I made a mole mafia which I tried to adapt the mole game into um, it, it, into into the mafia uh, format, and so I even videotaped myself and my partner Emily. I was the host. I even set up a TV screen with a thumbprint, and I would eliminate people uh, live as the host or over then YouTube. Did you just give uh, away your thumbprint to the internet? Like, mm-hmm. is that was it yours or? Uh, no, I, I used Anderson Cooper's thumbprint. He's my buddy, okay. so I just, yeah. I just used his. Mm-hmm. But so I was, I'm a big OG mole fan. So when this when the series came back and I saw the mole, I saw the ads. I was actually scared. I was afraid to love again because I thought this is going to be ripped away from me once again. I didn't want to get involved, but I waited until the whole season it was about to air, and then I binged it all. And by the end of it, I like there were times where I loved it all over again. I see the potential to rekindle the things I loved about them all. And I saw them in this series. It certainly has things I would want to fix. Producers. So I'm just saying, producers, I know you're all listening. Everyone listens to this podcast, as we sure. all know. Um, if I come across a little hot, if I come across a little passionate, it's because I love. Okay. If some of these takes come in a little too hot for you. Yeah. It, uh, this it, is it, coming it, from someone who spent fifty dollars on the soundtrack <laughs> to the mall. Exactly. That's love, yeah. baby. It's it's love, and it's not just the nostalgic love for this thing I loved as a as a wee teenager. It was I saw the glimpses of this show of what it can be and what was an engaging, more intellectual experience, more thought provoking experience than you typically get from your reality competition show. And I think that's what a lot of people love about the mole and why it stood the test of time. So with that said, that's my history. That's what I think at the top. Happy to get into it more. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I do just want to correct. Right? Sam Moore didn't pass me a diseased <laughs> dossier. It was just me. <laughs> I was just misremembering, so I got to clear up Sam's name. I, I mold myself on that one. So Christian, uh, OG old OG mole fan, lots of strong opinions watching this season of the show. Can you track your journey through these ten episodes of the mole without going episode by episode? Because then we'll be here for four hours. May I read yeah. to you from my uh, text messages with Christian? May I go, uh, go ahead? <laughs> so you have uh, my permission, Rob. Go okay, ahead. you should have handed out the script. We could have acted this. We could have given out parts. <laughs> On Saturday, October 22nd at 8.31 p.m., uh, Christian texted me, I'm trying to watch the mole. I'm 10 minutes in, and I've already ranted about it for half an hour. (laughs) He's in the right place. That seems like a rant. Okay. I said, uh, there's definitely a lot to rant about. Overall, I think there was more good than bad. He said, I'm only at the beginning, so I hope it gets better, because I love the mole. It's the only show I would have done other than Survivor. Ooh, Christian, would I you said, do uh, The Genius if The Genius was available to you? American Genius. I, 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 I think I would add that to the list. Mm-hmm. Crush yeah. the American so, Genius. That'd be incredible. Incredible. Then the text goes on, right? Yeah. Or, um, mm-hmm. the, the, so I think I, yes. then I get to, yeah. So, uh, there, so then I said a lot of people said that it takes until the second episode to get going, even though I enjoyed the first one. And then Christian, a day later, uh, the very next morning said, wow. Episode two dramatically raised my opinion of the show. I'm all in. That's exactly right. That's okay. that summarized my, my journey of watching that because that first episode, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, it's a whole clearly a new team 
running this thing than any of the old moles. And they start off in the woods, they're walking around, and it's almost a trope of like low budget movies. You do them in the woods because no one has, you don't have to pay for permits. You know, and so I'm like, and like, it's like, how low budget is this show? Is this going to be in the woods and they sleep overnight? It's like, is this like survivor camping plus the mole? And then they finally go back to like their, their, uh, their resort estate, which I assumed was like an Airbnb. It's like, oh, did they rent this Airbnb for a month? And then that's, they're going to produce from here. And we so thought like, when we, when we started the first episode, we're like, oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, we're just and, be in this one spot. Yeah, and I was like, and so it was like, it's like, what the heck? I mean, like, it's not the worst hour of television, forty whatever minutes of television I've ever watched or anything. It's just like, what is this? It's it's not capitalizing on so many things that made the mole interesting. Then the episode two comes by, and immediately they're jet setting. They're going around Australia. Australia is the set piece. It used to be the Europe. It used to be the Yucatan or whatever it was. And they're moving around. It's like, okay, this is good. And then all of a sudden they're offering exemptions, right? And I'm like, fantastic. They finally introduced an exemptions. And I realized they're stepping you into some of the complexity of the mole because the exemptions are a core part because they both give players excuses to sabotage the pot while maintaining, maintaining cover and the mole an opportunity to sabotage the pot while maintaining cover. And so they started work, working the, in the exemptions. And I'll tell you, by the end of that episode, not only did I know who the mole was, but, but, but by the end of that episode, I, they are trying to hit the red button, right? They're like, they're for getting the exemption for the pot. And they're, and I, 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 that's when I was really into it because you had Greg stalling for time in order to prevent the other team from figuring out that they are going to try to solve the puzzle for the red button. And it's just, and, uh, and, and you see the thinking of the players and you see that Pranav is like flustered. He's like, what, what, uh, oh shoot, I'm screwed up the phone call to the other team. Now they know. And you have, you have other people trying to get everyone coming back in in order to like say, hey, we're all here. It doesn't work. And I'm like in the moment with them. And then at the end of the episode, they all solved the puzzle. They hit the button both at the same time in a split, split in a split screen and cut the black. Like, yes, I don't think I was more excited watching a reality competition show in a long time wow. than watching that moment. I was like, yes, I'm so in. And it also highlighted what I think is core to when the mole works is when you, the audience, have a connection to the thought process of the players. That's very important because there is one person who is an unreliable narrator, as we know, and that's, of course, the mole. And so when you're in the show works, when you are in the mind of the players and can reason with them, you're like, yes, I, I see what they did there. I would have done it differently. No, they're doing it wrong. I would have done it like this. Uh, that keeps that connection and it keeps it engaging. Yeah. I think that the, the red button moment was one of the more exciting moments of the whole season for sure. Yes. But early on, I do feel like that was Zed. I feel like that was like a big turn of like, okay, this is this is this is done pretty well. This is like worthy of the of the name that it's coming into. This is also, I think, the moment where they all like really realize they can't trust anybody. And once it's like, okay, well, somebody's going to sabotage the thing. So now everybody's going to sabotage the thing uh, yes. because they go from great. The five of us are just going to sit here and we're not going to do anything, and we're going to get the money. And then they're like, oh no, wait. The other team's definitely trying to sabotage and be safe. Um, and from that moment on, people continue to use that logic to make other self-interested decisions, like looking at the dossiers, like Kasi taking the exemption, even though Kasi was the mole. She could argue, if I didn't do it, somebody else was going to. And that's I agree that that is certainly where the series makes a turn. Yeah, I totally agree. And and I, and. Uh... Because uh, there are at times, especially in those first episodes, but also throughout the whole series, where it felt like the mole for babies for me sometimes. Like, it, it, like, it, like it, it was. I mean, the players can be smart, and they so, and and, and uh, but like there are times where like just the show that we're being fed, they're like saying it's like, oh, you know, this this, this task didn't work. Maybe it was the mole. I'm like, yeah. Uh -huh. I guess, uh, <laughs> like, like, and, and how many times I have to say, you know, or it could be the work of the mole. We got it. The show is called. We, we know. We see the title of the show. We get it. And 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 so I, I like that they started stepping up the audience because I feel like they were trying to play to an audience who had never seen the mole, which is exactly what they should do. It should be an entirely digestible show to no one who's seen the mole before. So by episode three, you have Avery talking with Pranav. 
basically building a coalition without ever calling it the awesome word coalition. Um, and, and, and starting to talk about how the sharing of information is the true currency of this game. And without, not necessarily in those words, that's how I would put it if I were on the board. But the, but I, last I am not. But that's, so they started to push, uh, push the strategy little by little into something more complicated. And I think that the bet buildup was good. My, like, I think the strongest part of the game for the most part throughout the whole show was the game design. Like a lot of those tasks, not all of them. I think the last one was a little weird. The first one. The one with the drones. drones. Yeah. The drones. I'm like, look, I'm a robot guy. I'm a robot. For those who don't know, I, I, I am a robotics professor. Okay. I like being some robots. Drones look like toys. And it's not intimidating to be, cha- to be chased around by the 21st century equivalent of an RC car. You know, it's it, it, it's it, it's it's not very. Leave cool. my car out of this. <laughs> and, and so, in that fir- in that first challenge, I was like, like they start they introduce people by walking. They're walking through the woods. They but they have a helicopter. They fly them out via helicopter. Fly them in via helicopter. This is where the show could take a few notes from Jeff Probst, where you could have Alex on the helicopter with them. Is like these players. Are, they're strangers, and they're about to go on the adventure of a lifetime. But one of them's the mole, and she's like on the helicopter. You know, does Alex have to do more spy stuff in season two? I think she got to do more things in season two. I think that they should they should let her loose. I think that they should. Uh, this is one of many opinions I have. I think that they should have Alex um, interact with the players more. Uh, Anderson Cooper had them at dinner, and they've been drinking oh, wine at dinner. <laughs> oh, sure yeah, that did. was glorious. And some of the best moments from God the show damn. are just them at dinner. And it's more than just fun. You also see, oh, here's Darwin, the gregarious fellow. You know, he's fun, and or this person's fun. And you have, like, Dorothy off to the side, who's kind of quiet, not really. You get a sense of the characters, the character-building moments outside of these very pat confessionals, which is what we got a lot of the time on this show. It needed more emergent character moments. And when those came through, they shined. So anyway, I have a lot of thoughts, as you might have noticed. Yeah, for sure. So so uh, we love the button. We push the button. We go to uh, the end of the episode and then we're in episode three, I believe. And that's the the there's the moral dilemma that's in this episode as well. There's also the barrier reef uh, rescue operations. Right. There's the helicopter and the boat vantage points. Um, through all of this, are you still leaning in? Is there a moment that the season starts to lose you, I guess, is another way of asking the question. Yeah, I was really going through, and I was really involved, I think, until about Greg went home. I think when Greg went home, because he was a person I was really rooting for, Mm -hmm. uh, because I saw, like, he he and Avery, I think, had the most well-stated game manifestos of what they were doing. Avery was probably the most forefront. I think you saw that the most. She was like saying, I am going to, you know, uh, sabotage the game in, in a way that looks like the mole. Like really stating for the audience who may have never seen what a mole season is like, what it is. But also like Greg was describing what you do when you think you know the mole. Like you have to cover for the mole. You want to keep them under wraps. And you, and, and uh, so right around the, like the art challenge, um, I try to remember exactly what the challenge I, w- was, but there was something where Kasi was screwing something up, and we were led to believe Greg was on to Kasi yeah. and in, from confessionals, and it looks like he was covering for her. I'm like, yes, that's exactly what you do. Yes, I hope he gets it because I, I I had long thought Kasi was the mole, and so like I, I was identifying with him. I'm like, please, please get through. And then once he went home, not only did I lose the character I was most rooting for in that moment. I started to lose a sense of what the heck was even happening on the show. Like I mentioned, like I, the show is the best when you can track what the players are thinking and why. And near the end, I'm just like, why do you think Will is the ball? I just, I don't get it. I, and, 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 I'm, I, and I'm not saying that they didn't have their reasons out there. That they weren't conveyed viewer, to us. Yeah. They weren't conveyed to us. Yeah. And so I, and so I'm just like, I'm like, and even at the point where there was that wonderful chain challenge, when they're all chained to the wall and uh, and they're all talking, it's like, all oh, right, I was I was rubbing my hands. I'm, I'm so ready for this challenge. I this is on season five of the mole, and they and they went the whole, the whole distance, and it was great. And I want to see. And they're like, okay, who should we do first? Um, 
Kasi's a team player. What? I shouted at the screen. I was like, what? it's like, I mean, like, it's like, it's just like, you know, for everything we saw as an audience, so I'm like, we just saw her not say anything during the bank challenge when she was in charge. Like, that's what we saw. And, and so that disconnection was what started to lose me. I was like, why do these players think these things? All the way up to the finale. Like, I still don't understand as a viewer why Joy thought Will was the mole. Right. Uh, and even what, and let's assume that there were these unstated reasons that, you know, they saw things we didn't see. That's, that happens all the time on reality TV, you know, as, as some of us know all too well. Uh, but the, <laughs> but, uh, but in addition to that, the order of elimination stopped making sense. Like if it's one thing, if Greg thought Cassie was the mole, but then was, was, was thrown off the scent by the S whole mole moment. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And like, as we're sort of presented and then he went home, like, okay, that stinks. I, I wish Greg had, had got to pass that, but we'll move on. But then everyone after that, it's just like, it's will, Like, how could these people have possibly been saying in the game if they were answering the quiz as will as the mole, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I don't get it to this day. So, so that's where the show lost me. And that's my big thing to producers yeah. is that whatever is happening, I need to be immersed and understand it. And once I don't, I'm out. Well, Christian, I had talked about that with the finale where uh, you had Avery and then uh, you had Joy. And Avery, and, and Avery had thought that Joy was the mole. And right. Joy had been partners with Kasi. So you would think that uh, naturally some of Avery's answers are going to be about like, which mission is the mole on? What was the mole doing in this mission? Uh, you would think that she would be answering Joy, but inadvertently getting some questions right, where Joy is thinking that Will is the mole, uh, who is, uh, you know, um, not doing the same things that Cassie is doing. It's so about Joy is getting through. Yeah, and and and, the re- and it didn't make sense to me either, Rob. I was listening to your podcast. I was nodding in agreement with with so much of what you all were saying. And uh, and what could, could come down to is what the nature of the questions were. And I think that one thing they de-emphasize on this on this telling of the mole is what the actual questions were. In the old mole, and they did this, it doesn't mean they have to do it again, but I think it was useful, is Anderson would narrate each of the questions, at least at some point, as to what the what the questions were. And this Ooh, does should they hire of... Anderson Cooper to do voiceover work on the Netflix oh. version of the mole? Is this an look, improvement it, we want to suggest? They should hire Anderson Cooper back in general. Yeah, I mean, look, if you can get Anderson Cooper back, I mean, that is the answer to all the problems. But I would say, but I think Alex is great. I think that Alex has has the pop has a, a, the the flur- I see the flourishes from Alex that were similar to things I liked about Anderson. So like she has the two modes that are appropriate. Like like Anderson has his serious business. Here is me explaining the rules and being in character for the challenge, um, Anderson. And then, and then they have him dinner. standing by like an ancient European stairwell eating a baguette. Yeah, exactly. Or, or driving by with a, with a mojito uh, uh, mm. by the, cast, by the contestants who are riding uphill on a bike. Right. That, that's like, that was, I think that, I think that was Emily's avatar uh, for many years was really? Anderson Cooper uh, uh, with a mojito, wow. I believe. And so, um, yeah, we're diehard with it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and so there's, there is, so she can do the same thing. She can serve that same role. And, and you know, and, and, and I think in here, what that again does is let the audience think, who do I think was the mole? And it's a better opportunity for them to use their confessionals. I think they overuse the confessionals during the challenge. Like uh, it's a little bit Big Brother y, where they will, like on the show Big Brother when they're running a challenge on the, you know, the, the blue moon when I watch that show. Like, like they're constantly cutting to confessionals during the challenge from people explaining it. Um, when we're watching what's happening, and, um, and also this Alex, Alex could be explaining in voiceover what's happening. And then, then during the quizzes, the, the question is read. And then you see the questions, you see the answers, you're thinking about it. It's also an opportunity for them, the confessional to come in and it's like, like w- the question is, you know, who was, was, was the mole on the train, the car, or the plane or whatever. And it's like, you know, I think it was really suspicious how Cassie couldn't get the thing on the train. You know, it's, it's a jumping off point for a confessional. So, uh, and, and Alex, I think really does a lot of good stuff there. Like when she's doing the in-character stuff for like the press the red button thing. Um, and like, she's like, it's like players, you know, with one, it's like, she's the Joker. She's like, 
one of <laughs> one of you will press the red button and the others will explode or whatever. You know, it's like that. That's good. That's good. I think she should stay in that character throughout. I don't think she needs to start it off with. Let's get the party started, like she does. You know, go go into the mode, and then she ends it with something else, right? So, my so my overall take is that they could use her more uh, for that role. Yeah, I think that that's right. I think that having uh, Anderson as a, as a character on the show was so huge to those first couple of seasons, uh, and I think that Alex has the the right ingredients. I feel like. Uh, Jess, I feel like we need to put a baguette in Alex's hands in season two, and we'll be really cooking with dough. <laughs> There's really just not enough, like, sitting on the sidelines, eating a snack, and commenting on the performance that's going on around you. Giving I think the that's, players a I think hard the... time. Yeah, snarky like ribbing food. them a little bit. Yeah. 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 You want to yeah, grease that no... gnome, right? You know what yeah. <laughs> like that, yeah. that, was, that was those moments, right? Rob, that's not a euphemism. It's a literal thing that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I have grease, no doubt. Yeah. Greasy gnome. Yes. Um, so let's continue to grease the gnome then, Christian, as it were. Uh, gosh, probably better segues than that. Uh, <laughs> other than to say, what else is broken? What needs to be fixed and how would you how would you fix it? So the first thing that, that, that actually we clocked to both of us when we were watching uh, and when I were watching at home was the confessional style. It really felt like the confessionals were done after all of the questions, the confessionals were done after the events of a given episode. And I even heard rumors, uh, and maybe and you all maybe a bit more to the exit press than me, uh, like that some of them might have been done after the game was over. Uh, I didn't know which one was true. I believe but that's the case. Yeah, that's a, that. That's really that's not good. So you need to like they they. My understanding is they filmed this whole thing in the space of like seventeen days or something. Very short turnaround, something like that. And they now hopefully now they got a, a, a successful season that people love watching. Get a bigger budget, expand the timeline a bit, and then I do think that's a big in. a big answer to a lot of this. Is like give them more money and more time. Money. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and even so, yeah, certainly a little money will help. I, they need that. That's one thing. And that will give them more resources. They all need to do is set up a green screen at each of these locations. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'd screw up a green screen. I don't know what I'm doing, but like I, they, I, they have the expertise. Um, but and, and, and then and cause that's why I assumed that that brick backdrop was be like a green screen. But I think people said it was an actual brick backdrop that they all did together. And so the confessionals need to be fixed from that standpoint. But also, Cassie's confessionals made no sense. You know, like that's the, that's the thing. And, and again, that's not her fault. It, it's, it's, it's how she was set up with, by production. She had to lie to the producer she was talking to is, is what I, I believe I read. And that seems and that, to be the case. I think that that was uh, Zed, was that Mike's interview at Parade where Cassie's like, yeah, I, I didn't even like I, I was I was telling the producers a fake story. Yeah, which, that's think, bad news. I think that's right. And in general, I think you're at a disadvantage if you're going back and describing everything that you did and were thinking after the fact, rather than being, wow, so-and-so just got eliminated and I know they were going after this person and so was I, so how close was I to going home? Or now I know it's not that person, but good thing I've been focusing on somebody else anyway. We, we as you were saying, Christian, really lose their thought processes as we're going along. And I think a strength of the original season was the impacts on the remaining players of the elimination of the previous player. Absolutely. And, and again, you need to connect to that thought process. That's everything. If you don't yeah. have that, you're just kind of like passively watching it. Like, just like, you're, it's, I'm a passive viewer. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, go on, Rob. Yeah, please. Next question from the original mole. Uh, did the producers who were doing the interviews, doing the confessionals, did they know who the mole was in uh, the original mole seasons? So uh, I, 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 the mole patrol are the experts, so please correct me on this. Okay. So I recall there were some confessionals that were done in front of producers. However, there were also that were shots where people were literally in a like Catholic confessional booth almost, where they had like a low angle shot of like a small pinhole camera that they were looking into, which there could have been a producer in the room, but if so, they were looking directly at the camera. So that makes me feel like there were times where they were doing confessionals with no producer in the room which I, I think that there's pluses and minuses to that, not the least of which is the players aren't producers. They don't know what they need to tell the story. 
Um, yeah. Also, but- though, like, and I mean, they've got handlers and stuff. But if I'm the mole and I'm giving like my confessional in a booth where I can't see outside, like, I'm probably not telling you my like moly truth. Uh, like, I don't know who's actually secretly listening on the other side of this Iron Maiden I'm strapped inside. You know, like, mm-hmm. uh, in the case of what's his face in season one, like that escalated so, quickly. <laughs> so I feel like I don't know. Like, I I don't I don't I don't know that that would make me nervous as a. I think that th- there needs to be some safety net between the person who's the mole and who like they need like a dedicated producer or something but something that's also going to be able to be um covered up in front of the other contestants it's a it's a hard job it's hard to figure that out i i have been thinking about this a lot josh is how you the operational security around how you yes. handle uh, a mole production okay that if you if you've been on a reality show there's a lot of downtime and and on Survivor that's sitting around the beach a lot, but also before you go in for a challenge, you're like, they, you have to wait to make sure that the challenge is ready or before tribal council, they have to wait before tribal council is ready. And you're sitting around and you're not allowed to talk to anybody. You're just sitting there, you're on mm-hmm. lockdown, right? And so that's normal on reality shows. So I think that this, what they should have are confessionals, which are in-character confessionals, right? That, that you go and you do the in-character conf- confessionals, there's a producer there talking to you, Everyone kind of has their own person in a way. It, there's you know, like, 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 I, like sometimes, like I would talk to a producer more than others. They would be kind of like my producer, and so it's not unusual for players to have their own kind of producer for a reality show. Uh, I think that's kind of that's kind of known. So th- then, so that you have a little bit of wiggle room for like accidentally slipping in fr- up in front of that producer in the quote confessional, right? Um, and the, but I think that the concern then is the operational security of the camera people who are manning the cameras and the person who has like the little light stick, as I believe, I don't know the technical term, light stick. And it is, it, the it, lights, they're holding yeah, the lights. You know, yeah, it's, you, know, you know, maybe you don't want them knowing who the mole is just in case they let it slip. I, I don't know, but it, uh, in some subtle way. But instead, you should use that downtime to just put everyone into a holding room individually. I mean, they're going to hotels. Put them into little, just like little side, you know, cupboards or things like that. They just have downtime. Put them in cupboards? I, I I sat on the floor, Josh, in in the jungles of Fiji. So I don't want to hear any any <laughs> any complaining. Okay. So, but like to some, it doesn't need to be glamorous. You sit down, you give them a book, you give them a bag of chips, right? And then um, maybe here's occasionally a here's a bag of chips. Here's a cupboard good. that you need to tuck yeah. into. And, and yeah. but the chips are noisy, also, Josh. Yeah. And it helps yes. to obfuscate good point. when they're talking. Yeah. That's going on. Yes. Yeah. Bottomless and, and also, bowl. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and also you you um and so that obviously this is the cover for where the a producer will come in and talk to the bull, right? And so I think you have the secret code word. It could be banana. The, the, walk, code, the producer walks in and says banana. That's safe time, right? And uh, maybe you have producers, you know, come in and they and they and they open up the door of the of the other contestant every once in a while. It's like you good? You need another bag of chips? You good? Or oh, actually, you want to check in on that? You know, that elbow scratch you got last challenge? How you doing? So people, so players might hear doors opening and closing all the time. Can't really put any things to it. So that way, you have the ability to talk to the mole. They need a therapist or like the equivalent of a therapist out there. That's uh, which is really a basically a handler. Handler. It's hand, I mean, handler. like a spy, like spies have handlers, you know? So uh, that makes sense. And so they need to do that uh, because in the confessional, and this gets back to your question, what else they need? The mole ne- desperately needs a viable player persona. Okay. And I, I try to remember if it was Zed or Jess who said this is like, hey, did Kasi ever say who she thought the mole was? And, and, and like, and that is a classic signal to the audience. That the that the that the mole typically does not have a coherent hypothesis as who the mole is. Okay, maybe until the very end, season one. I won't say the, the name of the mole. At the end of season one, the mole finally t- articulated a hypothesis of who they thought the mole was. Um, but that by then it's too late, you know. <laughs> for the you know, but they won't say it earlier because they don't know whose player is going to be eliminated. You know, but let's say if I were the mole. OK, I'd be out there. And I would I would say, look, OK, I'm not going to nail down a particular person at the beginning. I'm going to spread it over a couple of people who I think are suspects. You list off a bunch of them in your confessional. That way you're telling a story and then eventually someone can get knocked off. And you just you improvise that story as you go along, maybe build some freaking coalitions. Right. Uh, that's anyway that you need. The handler's job would be to guide the mole into these stories. So that's one big thing. I would change. Yeah. It'd be a fun job, Jess, to be the mole's handler. 
I would enjoy that. Their story producer, yeah. 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 Just well, like to be the keeper sure. of the dossier. Like, <laughs> has it, had it, it was it was really tough in Budapest, but you've got it on this next one. Like I think it'd be fun. Be like the Nick Fury to their Black Widow. That'd be great. Good totally. gig. Totally. Yeah. Fun job. I, 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 yeah, and I think that that you know that it, it's fun to think about this from both a playing as the mole standpoint, playing as a player standpoint, even as a production standpoint, because you have to like set this up in a way where it's not suspicious that you're talking to the mole. It's totally a doable thing. Like they put on some really cool challenges. I like the idea of the, the you're sitting on the trigger button challenge. You're on the bomb. Like they're working on some cool challenges there. Yeah. Um, but what, yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rob, what you got? I was going to say, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it really would be that tough because I, I think the, nobody, the mole isn't given conf confessionals about being the mole. Like, right. uh, like if anything, that it's like the story producer is like, yeah, you know, that really wasn't super believable. Uh, what you just said about <laughs> being, uh, like, uh, could you try it again and maybe like say like throw some suspicion on this other person? So, like, I, I think you'd be like, uh, I guess that the producer that is asking you the questions might slip up and talk too loud, but. You know, you're always answering as if you are a player. Yeah. You're a really quiet I mean, producer. Yeah. Well, I mean, and I think that the, another thing that that was unfortunate, that, 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 like some of the some of the cast I thought was was fun. Like they were fun reality show cast generally. Uh, I'm not, but very clearly, I, I think one of the things that I first saw and I wanted to rant about. That's why I texted you, Rob, immediately when I was started mm -hmm. watching. I was like, why did does every single person in this cast have to be like? Uh, preternaturally gorgeous like like every single one has to be someone who could be a model like in, like in a magazine and and not that those people can't be smart in fact many of them are i suspect but that just like the casting direction really felt like man they could probably grab these people off of instagram and then I go and actually go and read. I think a lot of people were cast off of Instagram, so this makes all the sense in the world. And those can make great reality show people. And so I think you need I think you need some of those. But what you also get are people who are like big. Re they could be React streamers. Like you have Dom, who's like reacting in big <laughs> ways all the time and really genuine. Like you believe it, and that's fine for Dom. But you have a whole cast of these folks, and everyone's reacting in these like stunned and shocked ways and you have Kasi kind of sitting off to the sides like oh my goodness oh my goodness you know what what what, what could be going on mm -hmm. it's like okay, it really stands out so on older seasons of the mole they would pick people like a dorothy who was quieter who wasn't a big reactor uh and and and, and so uh if someone else was like not reacting genuinely in the moment well it doesn't really stand out as much so they need people who are come across as a little bit quieter. They can still be good storytellers in the confessional. Um, they also need people who are like the old grizzled cop. I know Josh is a big fan of that. Of what that are you talking genre. about, Charlie? <laughs> yeah, so so you, 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 or Kate, you know, it, it's uh, there are all these players who um, it, they need more people. They need who are hydrated like, cast members, you know, people who aren't quite so thirsty to be on TV. <laughs> I, yeah, I really yeah, do think so. I get the people who are like in it for the, you know, maybe for the money, in it for the adventure, in it because it was an interesting thing that crossed their desk, but not yeah. just because they have like great, you know, bathing suit Instagrams that are open DM season cast me on your TV show. You know what they need? They need somebody that doesn't do social media like literally at all. They need like a Rox Roy. Yeah. They need mm -hmm. someone who <laughs> has like who has no footprint on the internet whatsoever and i immediately somebody talking like with no clue what instagram is that person would jump out to me as a mole suspect already so that that puts a wrinkle in it i i would be excited to see that person and i do think like even big brother casts a grizzled old person every few seasons so it's not doesn't that person always go home first though pretty much yeah 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 no, but, the, but the thing is always. i mean that's <laughs> I mean, but that's one of the beauties of the mole is that unlike Big Brother, unlike Survivor, you can be a little bit of an island in the mole. It's not a good idea. You, you're not voted off just because you're on the outs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you can, like, there have been seasons of the mole where a player was, was being extremely cantankerous, but stuck around for a long time because they pegged the mole on episode one and were mm -hmm. nailing it on the quiz. And that's really interesting. Because, like, if imagine you're in that position, you go all in on the mole in episode one. It, it doesn't even matter if you fit in. 
And in fact, it makes you look even more suspicious. Like, how is this person still around? He's not working with any of us. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's like, it, well, maybe they're the mole. And on top of that, they're acting angry and crotchety. Like that, that, that can work. And it adds a wrinkle to the game. So, uh, so the quiz is fundamental. How the quiz works is fundamental to what keeps the show and what makes that show work. That, that the eliminations are entirely based upon suspicious uh, suspicions of the mole. Uh, that's in my opinion. That's that's the that's the breeding. That's the beating heart of the game. Theory. So you're good with the quiz. You'd say keep the quiz. Would you would you tweak the quiz at all? At, at least as far as how we receive the quiz as viewers? I tweak how I tweak how we receive the quiz. I understand quizzes are not you know. And when I give quizzes to my students, you know, it's not fun. Maybe it's not the most fun thing to watch on television. I think you can make it work, uh, but I think that it's central. So I think you got to find a way to make it interesting. So I think that you could need we like to bandersnatch this. Could you like have uh, <laughs> Rob? Could we do like swipe left, swipe right, and you get a different outcome of your mole season based on that Netflix choose your own adventure oh, technology? Wow. Yeah. So you could just watch the one that you want to see happen. Then how, what yeah. do the fans fight about? What? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I, I think that I think that you where you can do it. I know there used to be a time when back when ABC was airing the 2008 mole on the Internet, you could take the quiz online. Obviously, it was completely superfluous because they wouldn't tell you the results because that mm -hmm. would give away the mole. But uh, a way you can make that a more fun, interactive wrinkle is that once the show is over, you can set your quiz results like, no, you would have been eliminated on episode blank, you know, or mm -hmm. like, oh, you would have won, you know, and like that. that that's added a wrinkle. But I think that in terms of presentation on the show. You, you just got to tell the story through the quiz a bit. Which is the video, and, yeah. Yeah, so that's all it is. I think it's all um, you need. Uh, okay, just a few more minutes with Dr. Christian here. Um, Jess, you got anything burning for, for Professor Hubicki here? I mean, I am curious to hear more about what Christian would do as far as quiz taking strategy, because we've tried to kind of game theory this out a little bit. And it strikes me, Christian, that you would have some you have some thoughts about what is the best strategy as far as like if you if you aren't sure who the mole is, how do you get further? I let there's my my philosophy would be that there is a point where you pivot between spreading your answers and not spreading your answers. I mean, it's, maybe it's a little bit of a fuzzy sliding scale. You can definitely narrow down your suspects, but there's a point that you can tell the way the players talk about it. It's like, do I go all in on this one player? And that's a bit of game theory to it, right? Because mm -hmm. if you go all in on one player and no one else does, you put yourself at some unnecessary risk. And so there's a lot of gamesmanship on the previous bowls, I'm sure as we all remember, that like the people would say, I think I'm going to go all in on blank today. And that was a deception to throw off other people to go all in. Right. So, um, so I think that in terms of how I'd handle, like, like how I would suggest handling the quizzes, you definitely spread your answers early, unless you figure out one of the telltale signs of the mole, which we have not talked about yet. Um, it, that, that you, uh, that you spread your answers and then you trick other people into pivoting too early. And that gets you a little further, so you have to pivot at the last possible moment. So when you have the most information. Interesting. Okay. Well, now you gotta now yeah, you gotta so talk that, about this. What's that? Okay. Uh, so so more so, of those uh, telltale okay. signs. Of so so I mean so <laughs> I mean I mean you're all mole fans, so I'm probably not telling you anything too new. But the telltale sign of the mole was not sabotage. It's inside information. That's the one thing that players cannot fake very well. I mean so. Um, I, I, I believe Rob, did you peg the mole on episode one? Is that, that the rumor that I heard? I, I did, but did. it was more just like, okay, like, uh, who, who could it possibly be? And I, I think I just did a good job, like game theory so out who the show would make the mole. I see. I'd but, be over so, here just running around my room. Like, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well, for me, it was episode two when I picked up on Kasi, I was like, Ooh, because it, it, was, it was a very specific moment during the jailbreak challenge. And one thing, if you watch other seasons of The Mole, some of the times they, they in, the, in the finale, which they should expand dramatically uh, to talk about what happened during the season, particularly among the winning and losing players, tell us what happened, uh, was that The Mole would screw up by accidentally letting slip a little information about the game that they're in without realizing it. it happens all the time. And so uh, Kasi is in the jail cell and uh, Joy says, hey, do I have a lock on my door? Which is kind of a sensible question because she can't lock, she can't move the doors like 
you know, is, is it locked? It's like, yeah, there's a lock on my door. Kasi says, is there anything outside of my door? And, and it's like, it's in this race, the way she said it, normally when you get a question, you want to, you want to, you want to, you want to phrase it right back at them. And I was like, okay, is there a lock on my door? No. So lock on my door? No. And I was like, oh, that's a little odd. And then like, you know, we see as the audience, there's something directly outside of her door. And I was like, is she trying to nudge that player into giving her the right answer? And uh, things happened like that in previous season. I was like, that's a little odd. And that's actually, and I went back and rewatched it. And then uh, let me fast forward to the finale. They show that exact moment. And then her giving this like wild smirk right after she's told that there's nothing outside of her door. I was like, okay, so I, I think I was on to something there. Um, in and of itself wasn't like she's definitely the mole, but like those are the signals that you look for. Um, in fact, some people have gotten thrown off because players have miraculously pulled out answers for, for, for puzzles. And season two people know what I'm talking about, right? And it's like, wow, that's a miraculous answer that you pulled out there. Maybe you could be the mole. So like, so it could, because anyone can sabotage, it's easy to do. The real sign is inside information. And that's what you got to look out for. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, we see Lone Ranger in the chat saying, this has become the mole Academy. Christian's giving all of this out <laughs> for free. Um, actually you all owe us $25,000 for watching this stream. <laughs> we will be coming to collect the bill. Uh, Zed, you got anything for Christian before we start wrapping up? I think generally we're in agreement about how to fix the show and it largely comes down to editing to give us different information from the players, right? Like the, the relationships between them and their thought processes, I think are really what was missing from this season and go a long way towards making a future season so much better. I'm glad we're in agreement and, you know, not, not to take anything away from all of you, I, but, but more producers, if you're listening Call me, okay? We can chat. We can we we can chat. I, I I'll chat Christian's for a long time. Christian's number is no. You, you, you just reach out, reach out to me. You know, you know. I I uh, my consulting fee is very reasonable, and uh, we we can we can really make season two happen because I think Netflix has something on its hands. You have gold in your hands, Netflix. I think that if you make it oh, work, you could have no. a season. Well, the Netflix <laughs> producers are here. They are El Dorado. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Midas. Midas. Yeah. That's Midas and G Locks. Yeah. So yeah. So so I I am hopeful that they can take these very reasonable changes into account and make it the experience that so many of us loved and they grew to love in the mole in the first place, and then revitalize it for the modern era. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rob, you got anything for Christian? How about what was your reaction to when Dom had the chance to come back? I was that was wild. That's like game breaking to have a player in the game that you know for a fact is confirmed not the mole is wild. It's wild now, and if and Dom seemed to have his own way of playing the game, but I think for a lot of people, he comes back with confirmed information of who isn't the mole. And like, I think that um, uh, Sandy said that. I think she's very smart to have said that the way she did. And uh, so I was, I was, thought that was crazy that they, that they even offered that, that cap of that, that ability to do that in the game. I, I think that that's a little bit like the edge of extinction here where people are like, what does this do to the fundamental structure of the game that you're playing? Yeah. It, it gets me to melt down on the internet. <laughs> did you did you, did you not like it, Josh? Were you were you not a fan of the of the bring back? Were you a down? fan? Uh, was I a fan? <laughs> um, I I don't know actually. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I thought it was a, I thought it was a fun TV moment to get everybody to finally be like, no, we can't do it. So sorry, Dom. And then of course yeah. him uh, scrambling to figure the thing out on his own. Like that was good, but I think it was good in spite of itself, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it was it was a surprise. I guess it was that, but the surprise in themselves. No was more. Really good thing. Yeah. yeah. But I, 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 the last thing I'll say is that, like, uh, in terms of like the strategy here, like we talked about, like confirmed information. One thing I, I want to see more players finding ways to get confirmed information from the quizzes, like they used to in the past. There weren't enough coalitions shown this season. I know that allegedly there were ones between Jacob and Joy that were not shown. And so, and one of the things in a coalition is in the past, people have said, okay, we're in a coalition. We're going to go all in on X. And guess what? One of them goes home. The other one now has very strong information as to who it is. And they often, in, in the past, they've taken that to the very end of the game. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. And I know that there's a lot of people who are who are watching live. We've been doing a lot of the digging into the interviews and everything. And then there were absolutely journals in this uh, season yes. of the show that did not really yeah. come into play in the televised version of the show, which could have been really fun. That's always been a great part of the show in the past of like, here's what I've got. Let me see what you've got. Also, sometimes like the uh, unwitting journal swaps that occurred uh, in the past, like that's fun stuff. So, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of there's there's more like. There's more spy craft to be done is maybe a big take of mine. It's like there's like yeah. the items, the like the the relics that you could be passing along uh, in, in the show like that. That very much is out there as a possibility. Secret missions. There was only yeah. one secret mission in the whole series, if I recall. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they that, that, I thought that at least they set that up in the first episode. They should have given Will an exemption for it, in my opinion. Uh, that, that would have been better. But more secret missions, like more of that stuff. You don't need the nullifier from season two. I don't think you need that. Not a fan of that. But everything else, I think you can just amp up uh, uh, for a future season. Yeah. You kind of want to like own the nullifier thing, I guess. You know, <laughs> uh, makes, sen makes sense to me. Um, Christian, an absolute delight getting you to, to spill the mole tea here on the mole pee. No, still haven't gotten it. Uh, mole patrol. It's just the mole patrol. <laughs> The name of the podcast and the, and the crew that we're a part of. Well, thank you very much for having. Don't fix it. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, like seriously, it, it's great chatting with you. You know, and uh, you know, uh, hopefully, so, hopefully, we have many more seasons to come on which we can follow up on on this grand adventure. I expect so. I think uh, I don't, Rob. We've seen nothing about a, a confirmed season two. No, or anything, I don't think right? so. Uh, not at this point, but this was so much fun to get to do because I think that this is one of my favorite genre of podcasts of Christian has finished watching a season of TV and is here to talk about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. It's good stuff. Um, it's, it's tragically short specifically by Christian, uh, metrics at this point in time, but the, the party continues. We've got a jam packed soul Sunday here from the mole patrol as the Mole Monday energy carries on deeper into Sunday night, we are going to be back here in just a moment in a different stream here on our HAP talking to Greg from the Mole. We're going to be talking to him about his journey through the season, get some of the behind the scenes from Greg. Going to be a really fun time. Make sure you are subscribed just in case there's more stuff beyond that point. Who can say? We will keep trying at the very least. You want to be subscribed to the Mole Patrol podcast on RHAP. You want to be subscribed to RHAP generally. Rob has a podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Ratings and reviews greatly appreciated. Subscribe to the YouTube as well. RHAP on YouTube. If you want to be watching the video versions of these podcasts, you can even join us live if you are available while we are recording them. All of that good stuff. Um, Christian, they can find you at Chubicki on the internets. That's right. That's uh, Chub Chewbacca's younger brother, Chubiki, C H U B I C K I, on the internets, the uh, the Twitters, the Instas. Uh, yeah. So I guess that's where the where they'd have to cast me, right? Is All the, the spots. Uh, yes, the I would love to see you as a Wookiee in a Star War. Uh, I, I can't do the noise. That's that's that, that's a deal right now. <laughs> All right. Well, oh. we'll work on that offline. That'll Neither be my can free Derek pass X. to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, everybody else is on the internet as well. Jess is at Haymaker Hattie. Zed is at Hard Rock Hope. Rob is at Rob Cesarino. I am at Round Howard. We are the whole Mole Patrol, and we will be back very soon for the people who are watching this live and in the next podcast for those who are following along in the feed with our conversation with Greg. Stay tuned for all of that, and until then, take care. Bye-bye, and see you in like five minutes if you're watching live. Bye. <laughs>